So you have a hatchback, it needs to be tinted, but you have a spoiler in the way. This is gonna be really common. Some of them give you a good amount of space and some of them don't give you much at all. This kind of sits somewhere in between there. There's not a lot of shrinking. The biggest headache is gonna be just sizing up your pattern. So if you happen to have a plotter, then I would suggest just cutting it out on the plotter. But if you don't have a plotter, we're gonna go through this one. We're gonna do it with the wiper on too. Look at, look at all this, look at all this sand. I haven't washed this in, in a bit here. You know, if you have a pressure washer, just blowing off the car is definitely gonna help, but I've got a spray tank, so it's good, good enough for me. I'll take a scrub pad. Um, that's my tool of choice for something like this, where I will just give the window a good scrub down and we're gonna squeegee off just as well as we can and get most of that dirt out of the way so you can kind of see what you're doing. Wipe this off right here. Also, we're gonna have to wipe this spoiler off. Look at that. Main reason why I'm not removing the wiper here is I could, it's got a cover on it, so it's probably not all rusted out. But here in Michigan, I run into a lot of these that are just completely rusted out. So I'll leave that up to you for the sake of the demo here. Um, we're gonna leave this guy on. I've got a couple little tricks for working around a spoiler, even when it doesn't wanna just like hang up and stay here. This is, this is about as obnoxious as it gets. Now that we got our window cleaned off, we're gonna take a look at the inside. We're gonna do a couple things here. So I got a light, I'm gonna brighten up the inside so I can actually see my border a little bit better. And also, I'm gonna take a look at the border. You notice my dot matrix, I've got a little bit of space between that and the panel especially on the sides, even on the backside here. I've got a good amount of space around this whole window. I've got probably like a half inch gap worth of border um, before I even hit the plastic. So the other thing that I'm gonna pay attention to is where does that spoiler line up on the inside of the window? So if you look up here, you can see this dot matrix border and you can see where it comes in relation to the spoiler. So I don't have as much space um, right towards the middle, but I get more space the farther out I go. So we're gonna take some glass aid and we're gonna sneak it up as high as we can. I'm just gonna use it to outline the rest of my border. So we're gonna get to kind of where we can reach and then pick up this wiper here and then continue this around this curve. So there's always these little dot hills that kind of go over where the wiper is, in most cases. We're just gonna keep this going around. And then just kind of go up as high as we can, really, around that curve. Stop about there is totally fine. If you had enough space to go across the whole thing, it helps, but it's not gonna be completely necessary. All right, so now we're gonna put a dryer sheet on the back here. All you have to do is wet that down. Lightly mist the window. We're gonna suds this up. I'm just gonna kind of go over the whole thing. And we'll just let that dry. So if you wanna speed up the drying, you can just flip on a heat gun. Um, but most of the time you're tinting the rest of the vehicle too. So I'll do this first and then I'll go work on the doors. That way when I come to the back window, it's already set up, ready to go. We're gonna put our back window on here. We're gonna keep it like near the top of the spoiler, but don't get too crazy because you don't want the film to essentially fall off here. We're gonna unroll it covering the whole back window or at least up to the end of that white line. Cut off a piece. We're using um, a 15% GeoShield C2 carbon. And this is the part from there. So you kind of get that water to hold the, the film in place. Now you can pick it up. And we want to overlap the whole spoiler. But what we're going to do is basically pull it from near the top. So we're about a couple inches down um, with our fingers on the side. And we're going to kind of wedge it up into that spoiler area. Now, if you have an extra release liner, 
um, or something else, you can actually just draw a template. You don't have to do it all hand cutting with the piece of film up here. So if you have like a cutting board or something, you don't have to do it this way. But when you're out on the go and you don't have any of that, which is what I had to deal with a lot of the times, this is a nice solution for dealing with these spoilers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to roll the tint all the way up as high as we can into that little gap. Now we haven't created any creases. All we've done is lightly rolled it and where that fold is gonna be, we're gonna take our knife, we're gonna put out just a little bit of blade here and we're gonna reach up here. I know this is gonna be a little hard for you guys to see. We're gonna reach up here and we're gonna create a little incision right basically in that gap where that, where that light bend is. We're gonna just make a little cut we're gonna pull this back out, basically the same way that we put it back in. Now I got this nice little cut here. And we're gonna make a relief cut. So we're gonna go down, connect right there, cut up, and you'll see why in just a second. So we're gonna roll this film right back into this spoiler. I'm looking for where I made that initial cut. I'm gonna match my blade up to that spot and then I'm gonna just keep that cut going along. Always make sure that you free up some film so you can, as you're making that cut, it wants to fold up into this spot along the spoiler. So you have to kind of push some film up as you go. So normally I'd be one hand free, to kind of press the film up as I go, but now I'm holding a light. So once you get that matched up along the spoiler, the farther away you get, from the center, the easier that's gonna be. And then this should all cut away nice and clean there. Same thing on the other side here, and I'll do it with my, my free hand here. So I'm gonna wedge some film up there. I'm gonna start that cut, and then we're just gonna keep it going along. And I'm just using the feel of that blade to kind of reach in between the spoiler and glass gap and get a nice clean cut all the way across. That way you know your tint is matched as high up as it can go right along that spoiler. So I didn't need to see where that line is and cut it perfectly on the line. We can fix some of that on the inside. This is just a way to we take our film, put it up there, make that cut, and now we can address the rest of the window. From here, we have this little hump in the way. So I'm going to find where that is glass aid line makes that a little bit easier to see here. So I'm gonna make a cut. I'm gonna basically just curve that around and then I'm gonna do the other side and just kind of mirror that cut. Tear that away. So now I can pick up my film, pick up this spoiler and just kind of feed this film down here and now I'm underneath my spoiler. I didn't have to remove it. And you can see it's really not that curved of a window. So we're just gonna go along here and um, basically divide it into half, do what is called an H pattern. Not as big of a deal on the sides here, but just kind of getting everything in place. If you wanted to as well, you could trim this short. You don't have to leave it so long. There's some windows, like on a Golf GTI, you're gonna wanna leave this long, gives you some extra film to kind of pull as you shrink it on a blazer. And it don't, it don't matter, easy peasy. So we just need to get this shrink past this line here. Just go nice and even, keep this all going down. Heat gun at a 45, heat on high. And we can just kind of carve this all down. Got some extra little fingers here, keep going. Get those to lay nice and flat. As you get into these curves up over like a humped area on, onto the paint, that's where you would wanna have it cut short. This might throw some people off. So you don't, ha like I said, you don't have to leave it this long. I just know what I'm looking for and it gives you some extra film to play with, especially on a notoriously difficult thing. So like a beetle or a golf, something like that. Now, when you're dealing with the wiper blade, little trick, um, you could wedge a squeegee or something to help keep it up. There's other ones where you can literally take um, a shank tool, 
put it in a little gap here and that'll hold the wiper off too. For whatever reason, GM is kind of annoying. So what I'll do is I'll loop the heat gun cord and I'll use, I'll wrap it over my shoulder and I'll just use that to help pull it off. The glass, because I don't need to shrink very much, I freed up enough space and it's just quick and easy. Just hold that away, leave that tension. If you need to kind of get a little closer, just pull on that cable, get that heat gun closer. Do a little bit of maneuvering here. But I'll work on like the innermost section. Just get the wiper part for me out of the way. Once you get about to that wiper line, it's best to then flip underneath. And then let me uh, make sure that doesn't want to hop off the end there. Put that heat gun towards the bottom. And you're just doing exactly what you did over here. Just a little, little underneath shrink. Once you get that out of the way, you can set that down if you want. You can keep going off the edge. You could do it in reverse. <laughs> the point is just the main thing is getting your wipe. The main thing is getting your wiper out of the way and then shrinking up to that line. And that's all we need to worry about. The rest past that, no big deal. So for this spoiler portion, you could pick up the tint off the glass, bring it down a little bit, let it overlap the wiper and try and get it to, to lay back down so you can shrink up against the spoiler or you can just leave it where it's at and then you can shrink right up against the spoiler. So this is definitely gonna be a tricky thing to see up there. And to be honest, I have a hard time even seeing up there. What I'm doing is a lot of guesswork. So if I put this much heat here down here, I'm putting the same amount of heat up here. So kind of getting a feel for that shrink Put some heat, slap it down, and then you can run your hand or, you know, smart thing too, if you can't see, duh, get a, just get a light, turn that on, and then you can see it. So, I don't know. I've never really tried to do this, but maybe we can hold a light here at the same time. Hey, look at that. That's, that's not a bad idea. Take, yeah, I love the little stick lights, they're great. Put some heat, bounce some light up there. Oh yeah, way better. Just do that. Hold them both together, tape them together, I don't care. But you can definitely see it a lot more clearly when you just put a big bright light facing up in that direction. Just gonna shrink right to the edge. I'm not really worried about the part that bashes into the spoiler because again, we've got a little bit of room up there on this window. Let's cut that back window out. So this is, again, this is a 15%. If you have some good lighting, you can still see through uh, with the 15%. It's when it gets down to 5% that I have a real hard time trying to see it. That should all be cut out. Tear these off. Keep going. Just a little bit. Tear it straight up and off. So you see, we're getting closer and closer. We're getting a, a window all cut, shrunk, ready to go. Uh, at this point, I like to kind of touch up the bottom area. So I'll pull the glass aid off. I'll check for like any little ripples or anything right along the bottom edge. Take that heat gun, get it nice and close. See that little guy? Don't worry about that little guy. That little guy right there, that'll pop up as a finger on the inside. Give it some heat just till it wants to lay flat, knock it down. It's all good. See these little ripples right here? We can give them just a little bit more heat. Perfect. All right. So part of Tinning on the go, you don't have a glass board to work with. So, you know, in an ideal world, I would leave this over there on the glass board. I would peel it, spray it, and then just pick it up, um, leave, the, leave the hatch facing, facing up. But this section of the car, believe it or not, even though this hasn't been washed, this is a great section 
to just lay the tint here, leave it hanging off of the side, and then I can clean, um, leave the hatch up, and I'll just peel the tint right off the side there and get a nice, nice install. Okay, so with these defroster lines, I'll always take a clay bar, just spray the top, and I'll use these essentially like a scrub pad. So if there's no glue, there's no grit, I'll still take one of these and wipe it over the defroster lines just to remove any extra little speckles. Squeegee's gonna do most of the work. This is helpful for all those little in-between things that might rest on the defroster lines. So that's kind of what it looks like after the fact. Grab your handled squeegee. I'll start on the top most part. So all your water is gonna drip down. Top to bottom. I'll usually make just a couple passes to be extra sure. When you're peeling off of the side of a dirty car, obviously you don't wanna get all this nasty to kind of fall back into your tint here. But the nice thing is when you put it a little bit higher and you don't soak the top of the window, see how these drips are now coming down? If we soak that part, we peel it, soak it, that's gonna drip into my tent. If we don't do that, so we take our tent, we rest it against the top, we peel the corner, we use the car as a peel board. Do you see any drip marks falling into the tent? No, you just see the part where I licked it. And then we lightly spray it as we pull the tent down Look, it can even rest on the tire there. It, doesn't, it really doesn't matter that much. So spray it down and you can see, I put more spray here, avoided there. So we're gonna pick it up, hold it kind of close to the car and then you can, look, you can just pick it up and then you're like basically in a Frankenstein here. Come back up here, widen this back out along the top. You could also pick up the corners. It's totally fine if you just like picked it up and want to just carry it up there. I like to try and keep my fingers off of the tint as much as possible. So either way is totally fine. Then we just put that up, scooch it into place. And then you'll notice, oh no, my pattern. It's big, it's too big. So I'm gonna start in the middle. One important thing too, before I get too carried away, make sure all your edges are covered. Always tuck your head in and look up this way because you get everything all nice and situated and then they will have a nasty gap right there. Start in the center, squeegee everything out. So we're going to one side here. I'm not touching the bottom yet. Just do everything that's nice and situated on the glass, and then we'll kind of follow this back down. We'll get up close to this edge, and then we'll just kind of take a look at it. See, if I push this too far in, it's just gonna butt against that and pop back. But what you can do is you can take your knife, snap off a nice sharp piece. So I have just a little bit of blade out. We're gonna kind of go up along where this line is, or where the panel is, and we're just gonna trim it just like we did on the outside of the glass. It wouldn't really, really matter, just to give you guys a good perspective. There we go. Boom. So that peels away nice and clean. We almost lost this piece. Make sure there's no little snags or anything. Boom. Good. Now we can hammer out any extra that we might see along here. If there's a little finger that pops up on the inside, which is not too unusual, especially on a hatchback, I'll take uh, this guy right here, the studio squeegee. I'll heat up the edges and just hammer them down. There wasn't much shrinking in this one, so looks like we're pretty damn good. But you can always do some little touch-ups 
What you want to avoid is shrinking any fingers that might pop up on the side, but you can take a heat gun absolutely, warm up the inside edges. There's a couple little fingers right over here. Can you see them? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm gonna take my heat gun, warm that up, and then just get those to press down, and boom, they're no, they're no problem. Ta-da! And boom, just like that. You tinted a whole hatchback. You didn't have to remove the spoiler. These really aren't that difficult to install. The hardest part, again, is gonna be cutting it out. So first and foremost, plotter if you have one. Plotter is great to speed up windows like this. Truck windows, windows that are essentially hard to see um, and have a lot of tedious little cuts in them like this one did, where we have to go around all that. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and uh, see you in the next one.